Hello, my name is Keith Simpson, and in this introductory video, I want to introduce you to the Lightning Monitor. We're going to look at ba the basic features of the monitor, how you use it in practice, and in further videos, we'll expand on the actual setup and use of the, the monitor, including its connection to the PC and using all the features of the PC software that comes with it. OK, so let's take a look at the unit itself. So the unit is a lightweight, approximately 1.4 kilos when fully loaded unit, um, handheld and designed to be portable so you can take it to x-ray uh, into the theatre or, or hang it on a cage door for patient observation. It's a very simple device to use. Um, we have a, uh, a, a front face that's uh, wiped clean and we have a back panel which allows us to make a number of connections. This uh, metal bracket is fitted to all of our monitors and means that that you can connect this to a um, IV pole bracket, so uh, it can be supported on an IV pole. It can also be connected to an anaesthetic machine or hung on a cage door. So a number of mounting options through this bracket. Uh, also on the back, we have our on-off switch, our volume control for alarms and beeps, our power in for charging, and the unit can be run and charged at the same time, and our fuse. Patient connections are made on either side of the unit. So, for example, on this side we have uh, four connections. At the top we have the side stream CO2 return. So this is where the side stream CO2 gas is fed back into the waste system. The second connector is our IBP, or invasive blood pressure connector, and we have an option here for one or two channels. The one below is the NIBP, non-invasive blood pressure, or our oscillometric system, and our NIBP hose will go into this connector. And, and finally, at the bottom here we have the pulse oximetry connection for our pulse ox cables. On the other side of the monitor, on this side we have another four connections and a couple of USB connections. So to start with on this side, we have two temperature connections for uh, dual temperature measurements, so we can have um, an external or an internal uh, temperature probe. Um, we have an ECG connection and our ECG modules are either single channel or six channel, that is single lead, six leads, so lead two for a single channel, or three leads plus the augmented leads for the sixth channel. And all of those um, channels are diagnostic quality. And finally, at the bottom, we have our side stream input for our capnography. Uh, we have a couple of models available or options available here. If we use a side stream unit, then the connection is made uh, directly to the side of the, the unit here. If we use the mainstream, then we have a different connector and we have the mainstream unit obviously connected out near the patient. The other two connectors here are quite important and interesting. The, they're both USB connections. One is a USB type A, and this connects from here to a PC or laptop to enable all of the data from here to be fed to a PC. In a future video or another video that follows this um, series, we'll be looking at how we use that data and store it on the, on the computer. The one above is a USB port for a USB stick. And the idea behind that is that the data from the ECG can be recorded onto this USB stick at any point. So placing a USB stick into this port means that during a running of an ECG, we can record that data and then subsequently take it to our uh, analysis software for, for report writing and, and printing out. The idea behind that is, and the feature that's intended there, is that this can be taken to a branch surgery, to a collapse dog at a client's house, or even an ECG that can be taken during doing a, um, a procedure or a general anaesthetic on the fly. So those are the main features and connections to the Lightning Monitor. So there are a couple of points I'd like to sort of cover now, and that's that um, I've talked about modules for the unit and that uh, different modules can be fitted. The, the nice thing about the unit is that it is in, entirely modular, so that when you purchase a unit like this, you can decide to have just a CO2 module, a CO2 and ECG module, or any combination of the, all the modules available. As a um, follow-on from that, it means that if you buy a unit with, say, CO2, ECG, and pulse ox, and you decide at a later date that you want to put the NIBP module onto it, simply return the unit to us. We fit the NIBP module, change the firmware inside, and return the unit to you, all in a matter of days. And there's no penalty cost-wise for doing that. It's the same price as you would have paid if you'd added the module at the, the point of purchase. The other thing to, I want to sort of talk about as well is the size of the unit and the screen size. It's very um, difficult to get the optimum size for a, a screen or, or for a monitor. One has a conflict of interest. The, the one 
uh, desire is to have a unit as small and portable as possible, and, and another uh, desire is to have the screen as big and as visible as possible. What we've done here with Lightning is to have a six-inch touchscreen with um, all of the screen area being dedicated to, to the traces so that we optimise the screen size for, for that size of screen and make it as clear as we can. Um, the reason for doing that is that it, it's very simple using this unit, either with a USB connection or a wireless connection, to transmit that data to a PC so that the PC can then display on any size screen all of this data. So therefore we have the best of both worlds. And we'll, we'll come onto this in a future video where we look at the what we call the vital monitor software that shows and displays all of this data uh, on a screen real time while you're uh, running through your anesthetic procedure. Uh, in a uh, subsequent video, we're also going to start to look at how we use this unit and how we can use it in veterinary practice for our anesthetic monitoring. One other major point about this product I think is worth mentioning and talking about is the fact that this has been designed specifically for the veterinary market. So this is designed from scratch uh, with principles dedicated and, and considering the veterinary species that we encounter. Um, so we can support on this ECG heart rates, for example, up to 600 or even 800 beats per minute. And at the other end of the scale, we can support heart rates down to five or six beats per minute. This means this is as useful and usable in a, uh, a giant tortoise as it is in a, in a mouse with a heart rate of, say, 300. And by the same token, we're supporting high respiratory rates as well to support those rates found across the species. Um, the other thing, perhaps, is it may not immediately be obvious, is something like the sampling rate for the CO2 system. So on our side stream systems, we adhere to the, the microsampling um, rate of 50 mils per second, which means it's roughly just under one mil per second sampling. And with careful attention to dead space and the setup and the positioning of the, of the sampling point, we can adequately and nicely monitor animals down to sort of the 150, 200 grams. So it means it is quite uh, practical to monitor the CO2 output from, say, an African grey. Um, as an adjunct to that, we're, we're fully supporting the exotic species, so not just our dogs and cats and, and maybe our, um, our companion animals like the horses, but also the exotic species. So we have tiny temperature sensors of 1.2 millimetres that will integrate with this system and allow, allow us to measure temperature in, say, um, a hamster or a mouse. Uh, also, we have um, adaptive and, and very, very small Y-piece uh, circuits that will fit with uh, your uh, standard anaesthetic system or with our ventilators that enable sampling of very, very small uh, um, passages of air for the tiny animals to get reasonable and reliable CO2 waveforms. So just to, to summarise, the unit's not a medical product that's been adapted for veterinary use. This is a specific veterinary design product and will in one unit cover all the species that you're likely to encounter in general practice. As mentioned before, this is a touchscreen unit and if I touch any area of the screen, uh, different results will um, arise depending on which part I touch. So to start with, if I touch any of the trace areas, such as I'm touching the centre of the screen on the CO2 trace, it pops up a little menu and we can see that this says trace options, CO2. And we now have the option to change any of the features associated with the trace um, of that uh, part that we've just touched. So here, for example, we can increase the gain or decrease the gain of the CO2 waveform. We can change the, the speed at which it goes across the screen. So if I were to touch 25 millimeters per second, we've now increased the speed at which that passes across the screen. If I want to change that again, simply touch the unit and go back to our previous speed. So in this manner, whichever trace you touch, it will always bring up the options for that trace. Um, one feature that's also there, as you can see, is the option to remove the trace. And if I touch on remove trace, this has now taken the trace of the screen and placed the uh, information purely in a numerical form at the bottom of the screen. So the information is still there, the monitoring is still going on, and the data is still being sent back to a PC if it's connected. And by the same token, if I touch that now, I can add the trace and we'll put it back on the screen. So the, the simple concept is if you touch any trace, you have the option to alter the um, effects and, and the visibility of that trace. If we subsequently touch numbers, for example, if we go into here, then we get the alarm limits for that, that trace. So here we can set the higher and low heart rate limits for the ECG. Some of the other options that you can have are to change the appearance of, these, of the trace. For example, with CO2, if we go in here, we can 
change that from a fill to a line for CO2, which just changes the, the appearance of the trays. So all of these options and features are available through a very simple one-touch um, uh, point through the screen. Um, on the number side, just to, to improve sort of understanding and clarity, again, if we go into, into here, we can change things like whether we're looking at millimeters of mercury or percent. And, and again, uh, on our extended uh, features, we can change the apnea, alarm limits, all the high and low um, uh, respiratory rate limits. So in this manner, any um, position or uh, appearance of the data can be changed just by a simple screen touch. One of the nice features of Lightning is the ability to use the monitor uh, in its ECG module to record diagnostic quality uh, ECG um, tracings. So this means that um, uh, at a surgery or at a collapsed dog or wherever, even an animal in a kennel, you can record and um, store these ECGs from the, from the unit here and then take it to the computer for, for later re um, analysis. Um, the procedure to do this is very simple and I'm going to go through this with you now. All we need to do is to plug in the USB stick into the side of the unit, into the USB socket, and when you do, you'll hear a confirmation beep beep uh, to say that the USB has been inserted. At the same time, a small flashing blue and yellow icon appears at the top to show that the ECG uh, USB stick is inserted. What I'm going to do just to improve clarity is I'm going to remove this trace, and I'll remove this, the pox ox trace so that we can just see the ECG there. Okay, so uh, when we're happy with the quality of the ECG that uh, we're receiving, we can then simply touch the trace. And now, uh, as one of the extra options that are available, we see ECG start. Touch ECG start. And we see that up here, the date, which was in white, has now changed to a recording time in blue. And the recording time is counting up and telling us the, the total length of our recording. So we can make a very short recording. We could maybe do 20, 30 seconds for, for a dog or or maybe a minute or two for, for a clinical case. But by the same token, we could put this on the animal, uh, for, say a collapsed boxer in a kennel overnight and do an eight or 12 hour recording and then come back in the morning, take the recording and review it for uh, analysis to see if there's any anomalies occurring um, overnight. It's a very simple procedure to stop the recording. Simply touch the, the trace again and hit record stop. And now we see that it goes back to the date and the recording is saved. Nothing to stop us going straight in again, doing another quick recording, and these recordings will appear as separate recordings, time and date stamped when we come to look at them in the um, software, the Vital Monitor software. So a very simple procedure, um, but it is a very useful feature to have. And just to, to make a note that the ECG modules that are fitted to the lightnings are always diagnostic quality. They are used for monitoring purposes, but their intent is to be diagnostic quality so that a full ECG workup can be done using a lightning monitor. As I previously mentioned, we can connect the data on this lightning monitor to a, a PC or laptop and then thereby expand that into a larger screen or um, store the data for uh, uh, later uh, analysis and uh, review. So it's a very simple ma matter to do this. I just want to show you how, how to do this. So a standard USB cable, and we'll plug that into the USB port on the side of the unit, like so, and then this will go to our PC. And then one important point is that we need to make sure that the data is being sent from here in the appropriate manner. So if we touch the center of the screen, we get our, our menu, go to the setup menu, and we have uh, an option called data output. And at the moment it's set to none. There are a number of options, uh, as you will see if I touch it once, it says output cable. So this is the setting we need to put it to if we're going to connect the data to a PC using the USB cable supplied. There is one other option, if I touch it again, we can go to the radio and we can use an internal optional wireless module, which is in fact a Bluetooth module, to connect wirelessly from this lightning unit to a PC. That's a, a module that can be fitted at the time of purchase or again can be fitted uh, later if required. That, that or the wireless op the wired option sends all the data to the PC where it can be recorded and viewed simultaneously uh, with the data that appears on the um, lightning unit itself. Once the data output is set appropriately, we'll put that back to the wireless, uh, to the wire, the cable, and simply exit the screen. We have an icon up here now that's flashing to show a little PC 
to indicate that we've got data being sent to the PC. Um, one of the final things I'd like to say also about the Lightning Monitor is that the, man the unit is manufactured here in the UK. All the parts are readily available. The uh, repairs are all done in the UK, so if there are any, any issues or uh, you need the unit replaced or repaired quickly, then it's all done in the UK, so there's not a long lead time. Um, in uh, subsequent videos, we're going to look at what happens when the data from here arrives at the PC and how we use the Vital Monitor software and the subsequent Vital Store software for the report writing and the analysis. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in a future video.